Hello Stampers! Happy Friday! I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you live from Menasha, Wisconsin. How are you guys doing today? This is day 19 in a row of Facebook Lives for me. Can you believe it's been 19 days? So I actually started this Facebook Live thing off to celebrate my 16th anniversary with Stampin' Up! And I decided that since we were all kind of locked in the house, I'd keep going every day. And uh, it's been really fun. <laughs> hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathleen. Rachel, welcome. So happy to see you guys. Hi, Haley. Haley was here all day today, and she made some beautiful scrapbook pages. Hang on. I'll grab them so you can see them. Oh, my goodness. They were so, so, so pretty. Now, hang on, because her little cover for her book is getting kind of crinkled up here. But if you remember, we showed you these, this page. And I know this is backwards. The words are backwards. It says, before there was you. You know what? I'm going to try mirroring my screen. Now, when I did this last time, it started flashing. So you guys tell me if it flashes again. And... Uh, then I'll have to mirror back, but I'm pulling you up on my screen right now, so hang tight. I know lots of you are still coming in, and let's see if we have flashing yet, because I know my phone is updated a couple times. Oh, it's flashing. Okay, we'll take it off. That's fine. So anyways, that's why the words are backwards, because there's some little glitch going on right now with a, a download from um, Apple to my phone that makes that flashing happen, but check this out. I showed this to you guys the other day and then here's page two pretty pretty okay this is this is when they first met and all the things that they did and then are you guys ready for this because holy cannoli this was their engagement this is the engagement pages now this is a album for Weedley when she um, is born Haley's gonna continue making pages for her but this is her album to show her, you know, where mom and dad were at, what they were doing, how they met, all the pretty things. And then here's the other side of that. Ah, isn't it just outstanding? Yeah, look at all the details. It is crazy details. Very, very cool. And what does it say here? It says... Happy day when June 29th, 2018, Jared proposed to Haley on the steps of Lambeau Field, which is where our Green Bay Packers play. So that was pretty cool. The beginning of always, engaged, smile, love, love, love all of these, right? Yeah, I told you guys, this girl is creative and very talented. So that's Haley's scrapbook album, and I will continue to update you. Hang on, something's getting in my way. <laughs> today, <laughs> I'll continue to update you with the scrapbook album. So today, me and Haley are bumbling around my office. You guys know that my room is pretty small here. <laughs> oh my lord. You put two people in here and it's like two people inside of a cracker box. No kidding. And um, so today she walked by, I had a stack of stamps sitting on my printer stand over here and it's kind of sticking off the stand a little bit. <laughs> and of course she's got her belly going on there and she walked by it and bumped that. They all fell on the floor and made a big clunk and, and we, she goes, oh my Lord. And I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll get it. I know it's hard to bend over. And um, so I picked him up and put him someplace else. And then a few minutes later, I had my, um, my Simply Scored board. Over here, we're going to be using this tonight. That's exciting. But I had my Simply Scored board sitting over here on top of my other paper cutter. And I went to move, and this whole thing fell over. It fell upside down into the trash. And then another paper cutter fell onto the floor. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, my Lord. And while I'm getting that all picked up, I lost this thing because it falls out. You know, I lose this a lot. Um, I've done pretty good to keep it, but... So I couldn't find this thing. So I'm over there in the corner digging around and like you're like this trying to get down in there and dig around and all the things. When I did that, I have this whole container of white scraps and layers that I keep on my desk over here. That fell over the side into the crack abyss. <laughs> 
when that happened, Haley just happened to be kind of standing over here near me to get something or put something away. And I just took my head and I just put it down on my desk. And I was like, oh my Lord. She goes over and she pats my back. And it just so reminded me of when she was a toddler. And, you know, I'd get frustrated with something or I'd be, I'd hurt myself or stub my toe or whatever. You know how toddlers will come over and they'll like, it's okay. Mama, and she came over and she patted me on the back. It's okay. Like, oh my lord. So, anyways, I found my stylist. Yay! And uh, all is right with the world again. But it has been quite an afternoon. So Haley was here all day, and um, she was working on her scrapbooking pages. I was working on this, our project for tonight, all day long. <laughs> But oh, this will be easy. Yeah. Well, it's going to be easy for you. I got all the kinks out, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then we ordered food from one of our local um, bar and grills. Not, It's not local. It's in Appleton, but we go there quite a bit. Well, that's where I like to go for lunch. We went to game day and got some takeout today. And I had Cajun wings and garlic french fries. Oh, my Lord, they were so good. And so it was funny because you can get drive up pickup, right? So we pull in, I get out of the car and open up the back hatch, get back in the car and the girl comes out with it. And so we're trying to be really careful to, you know, for the distancing and the don't touch and the, all of that. And then she goes to hand me a little clipboard with my credit card slip and a pen so I can sign it. And I looked out the window and I go, no, I'm not signing that. <laughs> and she kind of looked at me and I'm like, nope. You can sign my name. I don't care. I'm not doing it. So, <laughs> I'm like, you're doing all these things for social distancing, like the bar and grill has where you don't even have to go in. They'll just bring it out. They'll put it in your car. That's all fabulous. But then you want me to touch all the things that you have in your hand and sign. And then I was thinking, well, geez, I got to touch the bags to take them in the house when I get home, right? But you can be a lot more careful then. I grabbed the bags. I brought them in the house. I took everything out of the bags. I went and washed my hands. I took, opened up the containers. Um, I didn't touch anything. I, everything is in like a paper thing inside of there. And I grabbed that and I set it and I dumped the food onto the plates. Then I took the containers and threw them away and went and washed my hands again. So I don't know. But I'm not signing the credit card receipt that you have in your hands. I'm not doing it. <laughs> and she was like, okay. She didn't give me a hard time, but I'm like, yeah, trying to be really careful. And then once we got done stuffing our faces, um, Haley and I went for a walk around the block and that was super nice. It was a beautiful day here in Menasha, Wisconsin. Uh, well, as beautiful as it's gonna be at the beginning of April. Um, but I didn't have to wear anything more than this and you guys know I'm cold all the time. So um, it was just really, really nice to get out and go for a walk. And then we came back here and we hammered it and I have a really, really cute project to show you. Like Haley was like, Mom, I love it. It's adorable. So yeah, I'm excited to show you. I got some mail today. I can't quite figure out what this is all about. But this is a scarf, I think. And it came in the mail in a package. And it says contents scarf. It's from China. Oh, this is for Steve. I wonder, oh, it says to Stephen Atchison. Oh, this isn't mine. I did not order a scarf because I was baffled. I'm like, I did not order this. So I'll have to give that to him. On the floor, by the door it goes. Sorry I opened your mail. I don't open his mail. Then I got a beautiful card from Barbara Yeager from Honeybrook, Pennsylvania. And look at how cute this is. Super duper cute. Yes, indeed. I love, love, love this. Very, very pretty, Barbara. It's an Easter card. Thank you so much. And she's got the inside decorated, too. Isn't that cute? And it says, Dear Kelly, just a note to wish you and your family a happy Easter holiday and to thank you for providing entertainment and card-making ideas during these trying times. You make, the, you make me laugh all the time. I think it is wonderful that you can laugh at yourself. Oh, I do a lot of that, don't I? <laughs> Keep up the good work and best wishes to Haley, her husband, and baby Lee. Sincerely, Barbara. And keep crafting, keep smiling, and keep safe. 
Barbara, thank you so much. So sweet. I love your bunny card. It is very pretty. And I love the colors, right? That is gorgeous. And what else did I get in the mail today? Kind of a light mail day. Let me see if I got anything down here. Nope, I showed you guys all my mail yesterday, right? My Sammy soap came. You guys heard me talk about this the other day. And man, it smells really, really good. So this is Sammy soap. S-A-M-M-Y soap. And I talked about this place the other day. They're in Kirkwood, Missouri. I do not plug for companies, but this really touched my heart. The lady who started this company, um, she has a disabled son, I believe. And she started the company so that he would be able to have a job. And they make homemade soap, among other things. But, oh my gosh, look at that. Arr. So I was talking about how Steve had to get me soap and I use oil of LA and blah, blah, blah. And somebody said, somebody told me you should try this Sammy soap and told me the story behind it. And I thought, you know, I think I should try that. So I got myself some Sammy soap. The kind that I got was lavender chamomile. Mmm, it smells really good. And I will be using this tomorrow when I take my shower. I've been showering pretty much every day. You know, when you're home, you, and if you don't sweat and get all gross or anything, you really don't have to, right? But um, I have been just because it makes me feel awake. And I I always feel like kind of puffy when I wake up. And oh my Lord, you should have seen my hair today. It was ridiculous. It went like this. Like that. <laughs> I must have slept pretty hard, but I didn't get to bed till 4 a.m. So that was kind of, oh, it was nasty. It was a rough night. I was not feeling real creative yesterday, and so I had to get a project done for my blog hop, and I just still feel like I missed the mark on it, but I gave it I gave it my best. Um, and you know, you'll just have days like that, right? I told you guys yesterday that I was really discombobulated yesterday. Well, it carried on, it, I just pushed it right to 4 a.m. when I finally went enough and go to bed. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Diana says she showers every other day. Well, that that's normal. I think that's pretty normal. Um, yeah, and somebody has to correct their bed head. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, if I had short hair, you've got to kind of get your short hair wet every day. Most people do anyways. But I just feel better when I take a shower. And I'm a real weirdo about smelly hair. I don't have greasy hair or anything. My hair looks fine if I do something with it the next day without washing it. But I just don't like smelly hair. And by the end of the day, I can smell it. And the other thing that I can complain about, look at my horrible fingernails, is when I'm doing my hair, I know you're only supposed to like s massage your scalp with your fingertips, blah, blah, blah. But when you have fingernails, you're like, <sighs> as you're washing your hair, I have no fingernails, so it feels like I can't even get my hair clean. <laughs> Too much information, perhaps. But we have a winner from yesterday. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Janice. Kellerzon, Kellerzon, I think I said that right, from Oaktown, Indiana. You are the big winner, and you are going to get some of these fabulous colored doilies. These are super, super pretty. And I'm also sending you a pretty card. Janice won by leaving a comment. So whether you're watching live now or watching the replay later on Facebook or watching the replay later on YouTube, make sure you leave a comment. You'll be entered in a drawing to win fabulous prizes like colored doilies. And you guys, make sure, if you can, please click that share button right now. You can you can do it while you're watching me. Click on share. That'll share my video to your profile page. And that helps me grow my business. You never know who is a friend of yours on your Facebook page that will um, see my video and go, huh, wonder what that's all about. And maybe they've never seen it before, but they're like, wow, that looks like a lot of fun. And as long as I'm sitting at home with nothing to do, I'm going to give this a try. Kits are the best thing for beginners. Now, some people that are experienced stampers like kits because they're easy. Everything's contained. Usually you have die cuts all in there. You don't have to die cut anything. And if you want to whip up some cards or if you're going to go camping or something, you can take the whole kit with you and you have something to do. So kits are good for experienced stampers. They're also good for beginners. And you never know who might watch my video on your profile page. Maybe it might even be somebody that lives close to you and you can have a new friend to stamp with. Who knows? But sharing my video really helps me and I really appreciate the shares. And also, clicking that like button right now, that does a lot too. Gets my numbers higher in the analytics of internet 
magic. I don't understand it, but it does something. Okay. Whoops, I'm dropping things. Hang on. We're going down. Back up. I'll keep my keep my crown on. I heard from you guys you thought it was pretty funny that my crown fell in my eyes yesterday. It was amusing, wasn't it? Okay, I'm going to get that in the mail to Janice tomorrow, but congratulations. And I think tomorrow's prize is going to be a half a pack of the Flowering Foils specialty paper. So, make sure you leave a comment. You definitely want to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, I'm watching comments come in here. And, um... Today, I'm going to be using Under My Umbrella. Seems very fitting for this time of year. I don't know about where you are. If you're down south, it's probably hot and sunny. But here, it's, you know, kind of cloudy and rainy most of the days. It's springtime in Wisconsin. But one thing that I really like is I can make a lot of cards using the Umbrella stamp set because it's perfect. And... It's also a really good stamp set for right now because we have no matter the weather, we're friends forever. Life's showers brings love's flowers and we certainly are getting showered on right now in life, right? Rain or shine, you're always on my mind. And I think that's really sweet. We have raindrops and uh, an umbrella that's open, an umbrella that's not open, some rain boots and a bunch of little flowers. Hello, sunshine. It's your day and showered with love. Super cute. Now... Matching punch. This is the umbrella builder punch and it builds umbrellas and we're going to build a few umbrellas tonight. <laughs> um, let's see. I think I'm ready. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I'm ready to flip this around. I'm going to put this back here so I don't throw it over the side of my desk again because there's still paper down there in the crack abyss and I'm not getting that out tonight. I've had quite enough of that today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I'm ready to flip and we're ready to stamp. Let me get all my stuff out of the way here so I feel like I'm halfway assembled when I bring you down, down to the surface. Okay. Oh, let me, I don't know why I have that here. What are you guys drinking? I'm drinking my strawberry lemonade. Guess what Steve came home with today? Guess, guess. Cheese curds. Not just any cheese curds. These were amazing cheese curds. So, Wisconsin is a dairy state, and we're known for our cheese. We're cheese heads. <laughs> he brought home squeaky cheese curds, and oh my lord, they are delightful. So, every time I go in the kitchen, I'm grabbing a cheese curd. I have no control, right? They're so, so good. All right. Now we're going to flip it around. Diet Pepsi. We got water. We got lemon water. We got Hello from Minnesota. I've never had that, Carol. How does that taste? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Flipping. Close your eyes if you get motion sickness. I don't want anybody to... And here we go. I've got my phone plugged in. I like to make sure I'm straight here. Here comes my host code and my blog address. Now, my blog is www.estampabove.com. This is my current host code. If you're going to place an order with me, I always appreciate your orders, but please use this code if your order is under $150. If it's over $150, don't use the code. Stampin' Up's going to give you some rewards, and I want you to have them. You'll find my online ordering button on my blog in the right hand column you just go to this address and then look for online ordering or online store or something like that today we are going to make a card in a box a box pop-up card there is several different names for this but what we're gonna call it is absolutely stinking adorable that's what we're gonna call it it is really really cute Okay, and I got you guys big up on my screen. Hang on, because people are messaging me right now, and that does not work. Yeah, Marlene said she loves the foil paper. Too bad it will not be in the new catalog. Nope, nope, we don't usually put um, celebration items in our catalog, like hardly ever, ever. Uh, the little bloom punch, I guess, is going to carry over, and we were told that right from the get-go, but I'm pretty sure that no paper is going to be going in there. Okay, so what I've got here 
is Petal Pink, and this designer series paper is coming from the Best Dressed 6x6 pack. And look at how little mine's getting because I've used so much of it. This paper is so pretty. It goes along with the online kit class that I just released at 6.30 this morning. Look at the shoes. Uh, where's my card that I made with that? Let me grab it if I can find it quickly. I was kind of rearranging everything today. Here we go. And here we go. Oh, things are falling. Here's my card. I did one of those front panel cards that stands up, so that's pretty cute. But look at how cute the paper is. I mean, the paper really takes the cake for this. Kindness is always in style. This is a sweet little card, and it really um, takes the stage when you display it, because that's, that's where the coolness of this card comes in. And then I made the little pouch or purse or backpack or whatever you would like to call it. These are super sweet. You can fit gift cards in here, candy, earrings, new car keys. You know I'm all about new car keys. So um, that's what I did with the paper this morning on my blog hop. Now today I'm going to be using this floral side and we're going to be making a super cute little card. So I'm going to explain my layers here first. One, two, three. Yep, that's right. Okay. So this piece is five and a half by nine, and I will have these on my blog after we're done with Facebook Live because I'm gonna type these up for you. I've actually got, I think, a template that I can put on there, a picture of what this is gonna look like when you're done scoring it. Then I've got another piece that is three and an eighth by three and an eighth. I've got a piece of Whisper White. This is two by five and three eighths. Oh, this is for my envelope. This is two and a half by six, so that we're gonna do the envelope with that. And then this piece is five and a quarter by two, and then you need three little panels at two and five eighths by two. Okay, so I'll, I'll give these dimensions to you all again, and they'll be on my blog when we're done. So we're gonna set all of these things. Well, you know what, let's do this right now. I love to make matching envelopes and it, ha it, it helps me stop hoarding my designer series paper. So, and what I said on my video that I made last night for my blog hop today um, is when you order designer series paper, if you can, I recommend just buying two packs I find that when I buy two packs, I don't feel like I have to be stingy with it. Because what usually happens to me is I don't use it. Because, oh my gosh, I just love this paper so much. But I just know that the minute I use up one of the patterns in there, I'm going to wish that I had it. So then I just never even use it. And that's really silly. Do you guys do that? Because I do it all the time, but not anymore. Because I started buying two packs of paper and then I'm using it, like I'm using both of them too, so that's good. Isn't that pretty? That is just, who's not gonna love getting that in their mailbox? All right, now I'm gonna bring in my scoreboard, and on this big layer of petal pink, on the long side, we're gonna score this, and I always use the smaller tip on my stylus for cardstock, the larger tip I use for designer series paper. You don't wanna do as much pressure on designer series paper as you need to do on cardstock. So um, I use the smaller end. We're gonna score this at two and an eighth, four and a quarter, six and three eighths, and eight and a half, okay? Then we're gonna turn it to the short side and we're gonna score at two and three quarters. And I'm going to just give you these measurements again. This is nine by five and a half. You're gonna score it two and an eighth, four and one quarter, six and three eighths, eight and a half on the long side, and then two and three quarters on the short side. We've also got this little piece. This is three and an eighth by three and an eighth. And we're gonna score this in a half an inch on both sides. So I'm gonna turn it around here and do a half an inch on both sides, just like this, okay? Now that we have this piece scored, we're gonna cut it in half, and 
whoops, one and a half, one and one notch past the one and a half is going to cut this in half. And did I do good? Oh, I did, I did pretty good. Oh yeah, I got it completely in half. It's not super important. Just cut it in half. It's not a big deal if it's a little bit not in half. Okay. I'm going to put this back because I'm always so afraid I'm going to lose that. And I'm going to set this someplace where it won't fall into the garbage. Gosh, I just set myself up for that every time. <laughs> okay, now, while we've got this piece, this is where the line is in the middle, and this is our little half-inch piece, I am going to take this, and I'm going to cut diagonally and cut this tab off, okay? This is the tab to close our little box. Okay, so we're going to cut there. And now we're going to cut on all these score lines from the top down. And try to cut straight. That's important. Sometimes I think bigger scissors work better for this. And you want to get all the way up to the score line. I'm really fumbling here tonight. <clears throat> There we go. Okay, so our tab has gone up here. Here's our piece. What we're gonna do now is we're going to fold and burnish these um, vertical lines. Do you know what runs through my mind when I'm like sitting here going, is that vertical or, or what's the other word? Horizontal. Nope, horizontal is on the horizon. I need vertical. That's the word I'm looking for. Do you guys think like that? Like, oh, some days I just really struggle. And I got to think about those little funny things that I have going on in my head. Okay. <clears throat> now you can use tear and tape. You can use liquid glue, whatever works for you. I have some tear and tape. Here it is. Um, I'm just going to use tear and tape on this part. Sometimes I use liquid glue. I don't know why. I just kind of switch back and forth. But tear and tape will work really good to keep my box together. And then I need my take your pick tool, which is buried over here. Hang tight. There we go. And now you're going to take your box and you're going to just fold it closed, okay? That's the easiest way to do it. Okay, so we've got our seam right here. I'm going to put that towards the back of the box. So now our seam is on that layer right there. And now we're going to fold the two sides and the front down, but you don't want to fold the back one. Just leave that one alone. Now we're going to take these two pieces and we're going to fold on those score lines. Fold and fold. So we end up with two pieces that look like this, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some tear tape. And oh, by the way, today when I was cutting all these layers to make this card in a box or pop-up box or pop-up card or whatever you want to call it. When I was cutting all the layers for it, I thought that I was going to make this for you on camera, not like make a sample one and then make the one on camera for you. I thought, nah, I can make this. I've made these before. <laughs> oh my goodness, am I glad I decided that was a really stupid idea. What popped into my head was Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, danger. Don't do it, Kelly. So I decided I'd better make up a mock one so that I know what I'm doing because we all know how well things go for me when I stamp on the fly sometimes. And I'm so glad I did because I learned a lot of things that I had forgotten from the first time that I made this card. I've made it before and um, it would have been a colossal disaster. Okay, I just took my tear and tape off of here. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to keep this folded over while I put this into my little box, okay? So I didn't put anything on the other tab, just this one. And now I'm going to push this down in here, okay? I just have it secured on one side. This other side we're going to add some glue to. And, you know, you can figure out how to do this easiest for you, but... Maybe this isn't the best idea in the world. I'm just going to add some glue to this one. This is, this is not like need to be cemented in here. Nothing's going to happen to it. Okay, I just added some glue to it. You kind of want to look at it and make sure you got it straight. That looks pretty good. 
and now I'm just going to hold it a little bit so my glue sets up. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we glued that tab to that side and that side in there. And hang on, my family is messaging me and then it blocks my screen so I can't see if I'm in the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, now, <laughs> I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to peel this off. Maybe. I'm going to add my glue right now because I'm feeling pretty confident that I can get it in there without making a gluey mess out of it. So I'm kind of holding down my tabs. This is where you could use another hand. And I'm going to put this right in here. I kind of want to try to get it straight there. So that looks pretty good. Okay. And then I'm going to press it to the... Oh, I did really quite well. Okay. Just do however you can do it. But here's what you're doing. You're putting those two pieces right in there. Isn't that weird? Here, here's what it looks like from the bottom. Just two like partitions in there. Okay. So once you have those in, now the fun part. We are going to decorate with this designer series paper. This is the piece that is two by five and a quarter, and I'm just going to take this and put it right in here. Now this might not go all the way down to the bottom according to my dimensions, but I just really don't care because nobody's ever going to see that. Let's see how close. Yeah, see, it's not the same down here as it is up here, but again, doesn't matter. Because when you're looking at the card, you're going to look at it like this. Then I'm going to take, there's three of these pieces, and we're going to adhere them to these three panels that are left. Isn't this so pretty? This paper is just beautiful. Who has the best dressed 6x6 six six paper? How many of you have ordered this paper? I was using it for Easter cards. It's super pretty. Who got the paper? Oh, hang on. My screen isn't scrolling again. I don't know why that happened. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I guess I should just be glad I'm not getting put in Facebook jail. And I haven't been in a long time. <laughs> Knock on wood. Okay, so here we go here. All right. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Now, all of this fits in an envelope, so stay with me. This last piece of Whisper White, what I wanted to do is, what was my idea? Oh, I know. I was going to take a piece of this paper, okay? I'm going to bring in my builder, my umbrella builder punch. I'm going to punch out this cute little umbrella. Hang on. Punch out this cute little umbrella. And then I've got a scrap of lovely lipstick here. That's the red that's in our designer paper. I'm going to punch out the little, um, that thing, the umbrella handle deal. And we're going to glue this on the little white panel. Just like that. And then I'll put a little bit of glue on here. We're going to tuck that. Come on. There we go. Right in there. Now, this is your panel that you can write on on the back. And I just filled up the bottom part there with my umbrella, so I don't have to write very much. <laughs> Some people really struggle with what to write in cards, and if that's the case, you write really big or you don't leave a lot of room to write, and then it looks like it was completely intentional. There's always a way to make yourself shine, right? <laughs> Isn't that cute? So this is my panel I'm gonna write on. This is the panel where all the fun things are gonna happen. And here's what we're gonna do. I got, I picked out the patterns from this paper that I thought would match really nicely. And I'm going to take the striped paper and this beautiful flower paper, and we're going to punch out some umbrellas. And you need two umbrellas for each umbrella. And I'm going to be making four umbrellas. So I need 
where'd the other one go? Do you see? There should be another one here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four. So I've got four flowery umbrellas. Now I'm going to do some striped umbrellas. I need four of those also. Oh my gosh, this umbrella is, I think, going to be my favorite. I just love the colors in these stripes. If your punch ever gets caught like mine just did, just squeeze it because it's got paper stuck in and it'll punch out. So here's the striped ones. And let me clean up all these little punchy messes. Haley lifted up her arm today. She had a sweater on and she had like 20 dimensional backings clung to her arm. It was kind of cute. Then we're going to take, I think that I want to use these um, lovely lipstick. I kept calling this lovely lilac today and Haley goes, I am going to totally catch you doing that on your live tonight. And I thought, I hope not. <laughs> I don't know why old names of colors keep popping in my head. Like I said on my video this morning, I keep wanting to call pear pizzazz certainly celery. And you know how long it's been since it's been called certainly celery, right? Okay, now what we're going to do is I have some window sheet strips here. And these are just quarter inch, or I'm sorry, half inch wide window strips. And I'm going to use some glue dots because I think glue dots work really good with window sheets, window sheet strips, that's what I meant to say. And I'm going to put that right here and then I'm going to put it on my umbrella, okay? Then I'm going to bring in one of my umbrella dealy whoppers, whatever you want to call it. What is that called? The umbrella something. I got another mini glue dot here, and you can adhere this however you think, but I thought mini glue dots worked really good to hold things. Oops, that's, yeah, that's, nope, that's not what I want. Hang on. I'm real weird about which way my umbrella handle, is that what it's called? I don't know. Should go, and I think they should go this way. <laughs> that's just maybe because I'm right-handed. I don't know. We're going to do that. Oh, I was going to do this up ahead of time, you guys, but then I kind of forgot. I jumped the gun on posting that I would be live shortly, so <laughs> it's like, whoops. I needed to get live right away. And then I'm going to cut this, so I'll measure for you in just a second to let you know how, how long we want these. Um, there we go. So we have that. And then this is a striped one. So I'm going to bring in the handle deal. Add another little glue dot. Just like that. So that glue dot is actually, or that handle is going right over this. And did you guys tell me what it's called yet? I don't know. <laughs> and um, then we have two of these. We're going to do the same thing. See, I could have done this for you guys. So you wouldn't have to sit here. But, well, you're just going to have to listen to me jabber. That's the way that goes. I'm going to take this and cut it. So I have another little strip. What else happened today? Anything? One of our local churches, which is only a couple blocks away from my house, was broken into last night and vandalized. And money was stolen. I think money was stolen from the church. There was a report that money was stolen from needy people. And I, was, I don't know if it was really the church or not, but I'm assuming that it was. Yeah, I hope more things like that don't start happening because it's a little, that gets a little creepy, right? I don't like that at all. That's a little too close to home. And we live in a pretty, you know, it's a pretty safe neighborhood. It's a very middle class um, neighborhood. Not There's not rich people in our neighborhood. And when I say rich, like, you know, people making $200,000 a year. We don't, we don't have, I, I consider that rich. We don't have people like that living here. <laughs> that sounded terrible. We have a, 
uh, probably a lower middle class neighborhood. That's probably about it. And I'm just saying that because of income levels, not because the people are lower class. Our neighbors are great. <laughs> so, gosh, I, almost, I really got myself into a little pickle there, didn't I? But anyways, there was um, church vandalism and a robbery last night at a church that's very close to our house. And as a matter of fact, Haley went to school with the girl. Her dad is the pastor. And so that was really quite unsettling for us. And of course, then that gets Steve in, you know, 100% man mode because, you know, the man's got to take care of the family and that whole thing. And I know that he definitely will, but he's been saying for quite a while, lock the front door, keep the front door locked. And I was always one. I never even locked the door when I left the house. <laughs> but we don't, we don't do that anymore. Okay, so now all I'm doing is gluing these little umbrellas over all this stuff that I've done here. And oh, I love the stripey one. The flower one is really pretty too, but I'm more working with the flowered paper a lot. I'm, I really like the striped one. There we go. We got to make them meet up good, okay? Oh, and here comes my Facebook Live hot flash. <laughs> it seems like I get one every time I'm on with you guys. Oh, you just make me really warm and fuzzy. Right? Right. Yeah, Debbie says hopefully they will catch them. I know. I hope they catch them too. And, um, you know, maybe I, I, this might not be the right thing to say, but... I hope it's just some dumb kids that are bored. You know what I mean? That it's not like a criminal ring or something that's going to start robbing people. You know what I you know what I'm saying? Not that I hope kids get caught doing it cuz that's not nice. That's I have I have a lot of love for my teenager friends. So maybe I should just shut up. I keep sticking my foot in my mouth. Okay, so here's our little umbrellas, you guys. Let me bring this in. Here we go. So these are cut kind of at varying heights. Like this one is a little shorter than this one and this one's a little longer. You do whatever you need to do. But I am going to take my window sheets and I'm just going to add two glue dots. And you want two because if you only use one, it'll kind of go like this and you want it to stay permanent here. So I'm gonna take this one and now you also want to take your box and squeeze it like this, okay? We're gonna kind of squeeze it like this so that we know where we can put our umbrellas. You don't want your umbrella, first of all, to go over the side here, on the side as it's closed like this. That's super important. I just took my umbrella and I glued it to this panel right here. Now I'm going to grab another one and see where do I want to place that. And again, what I found is you need to close your box so that your umbrella isn't hanging out because it needs to fit in an envelope. Hang on, my, my umbrella is trying to get away. So I'm going to take this one and put it right about there. I'm just kind of holding it onto it to see kind of where I need to cut it. So I'm going to cut it. Then I'm going to put my glue dots on. Oh, I'm almost out of this roll. Here we go. So Haley's been using a lot of my gold foil paper because she loves gold and gold is very popular right now. I just got an order in today with five packs in it. I'm like this, this should do you, child. Don't want her to run out. Okay, so again, kind of closing. I'm pushing this over here and as high as I can and then closing. There we go, look at, look at my cutie patootie little umbrellas, you guys. Isn't that fun? Now we're gonna put these in a little bit lower and we're gonna attach them to the second panel that's in there. So we're going to do two mini glue dots again, just like that. Here comes our next one. And again, I'm going to close my box to make sure that my umbrella is inside the limits of my envelope. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Look what I did, you guys. I just glued it to the side. That's not what you want to do. So let's get some more glue dots in here. Can you imagine if I hadn't made this the first time? Like I was screwing up everything. Okay, no worries. No, no harm, no foul. We're going to try this again. We're going to put this in here like this. You've got to make sure that your 
your umbrella is sticking to that little panel, not the side of your box. Okay, before I had it in there on the side, but now it's on our panel. Isn't that just super sweet? And then we have one more umbrella. Now, you can have pop-up things of any type, and if you remember the little crib card that we got from Barbara that everybody is wanting me to show them how to make, this is how you make that type of a card. Okay, hang on. Again, we gotta close our box and make sure we're getting in here. I don't want that to be exactly where the other umbrella was. I think I'm just gonna put it a little bit lower. Okay. Well, that didn't work out. Hang on. Oh, that's still got good glue on it, so hang on. I think I've got this too long. I'm gonna cut this off. Add some more glue dots. So I guess the moral of this box is, is that you make the box first and then you put all your little items on these type of things or you'll find a different way to do it. But then you add your things after you've kind of got your box all put together and it's ready to roll. Oh my Lord, look at how cute it is. Is this not just adorable? Okay, um, one more thing we're gonna do here is I need to find, I have die cut pieces, here they are. Oh look, I, die, I punched all these out too and I kind of forgot. Um, we're gonna put a sentiment on a white stitched shape circle. And I'm gonna use Lovely Lipstick. Here it is, I'm like, where did it go? We're gonna use Lovely Lipstick and this little sentiment. Hang on, that's got some black marks on it. I don't like that. We're gonna grab this one. I always, you know, usually have two, so if I screw it up. Well, I don't know if this will fit on here. Oh yeah, it will. Oh yes, it will. Look how cool that is. Now, my question for you, we're gonna put that right here on the front, and I wanna know, should I put it on Mossy Meadow, which is the dark green that's in my paper? So let's hold that up here, I'll let you guys vote. Mossy Meadow for my scallop or Lovely Lipstick. What do you guys think? Which one? Hang on, I'm scrolling my screen. We need to know which one. Oh, there we go. We got a Mossy Mellow coming in from Llewellyn and there you have it. Llewellyn, you're the big winner of getting to decide. Which color I use. <laughs> and now you can never say you haven't won. Like people say, I never, I've never won anything or I never win anything. You can't say that anymore because you just won getting to pick Mossy Meadow or Lovely Lipstick. <laughs> it's your lucky day. Look at that. Oh yeah, we got lots. Oh, we got, we got some Lovely Lipsticks in there. Okay, Connie likes that. Sharon like, no. Maggie likes lovely. Well, you didn't win. <laughs> here we go. I'm gonna put this right on this little front panel. Let's get this out of here before I cry, right? <laughs> There's no crying and stamping. And then I hear a Harley. Is that my husband? Oh, he better not be out there. Well, I shouldn't say that. He can go ride if he wants, but I might like to go too. Here we go. Then Haley is the one who told me to put the pearls on it because the pearls are going to look really, like, very elegant, I think, is a good way to describe the pearls. Look at how cute those are, you guys. Let me get some more light in here. Isn't that just the sweetest little thing ever? Like, okay, so, and here's your back. Now, when you go to mail it, it just closes like this. This back panel is the one that you don't fold on the score line. If you happen to fold it on the score line because you forget, and I did on the other box I made you and I'm gonna show you in a minute, don't worry about it because that's why I made this panel right here of designer paper longer to support it. And then as an afterthought, I thought, well, where are you gonna write? So then I put this panel on and that's gonna make it stand up too because this is the one, it's scored, but you don't fold on that score line. But this all goes just like this and it fits right in your envelope, and you mail it off. Cool, is that totally cool? 
I think that I have redeemed myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. There we go. Super, super cute. And then when somebody gets it, they're going to open it. And it's going to be like, oh my Lord, it's going to fall right into place. They're not going to have to get instructions on how to display it. It's just going to sit just like this. Super cute, right? Now, do you guys want to see another one? Let me see some hearts if you want to see another one. If you're coming in later, please don't forget to share my video. Sharing really helps me. You can click on that share button right now. Also click on that like button because that helps me out too. Here comes my other card. Look at this one. What do you think? This just uses different paper. I used purple posy. I stamped the boots on the designer paper, the polka dot, and put the boots on here. I cut them out and put them on here. But how sweet is that? Now this is my first one that I made. You can see it's kind of crooked in there because I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> but it's nice to be able to watch somebody do it so now you know how to do it and I would love to see what you make with this. You can, you can make this, actually you can make it longer and if you have like um, bigger envelopes to put your cards in. All you have to pay attention to is this. Now my my envel or my um, umbrella is sticking out a little bit, but it's going to push right in. It's going to fit right into this envelope so that I can mail this. And then again, when they get it, boom, it pops right open like this. I, I keep doing like this. You can't really see what's going on. <laughs> I am mesmerized by my pop-up box card, I guess is what I would call it. Yeah, pretty cute, right? Okay, and then if you remember the card that Barbara sent us, somebody asked me if I would show you how to make this. This is the same thing as these, okay? Same exact idea. You're going to cut some strips of paper, then you're gonna put little strips in between if you wanna make a crib. And then just put a tab on the end, just like we did, okay? You just put a little tab like this so you can glue it down in there and you just put those two rows in there and, and put your little pieces stuck to them. Same exact concept, except this is much bigger. Yeah, pretty cool, right? This goes in an A2 envelope, or A4, or whatever they're called, our medium white envelopes, A, A2? I don't know, what is it, A2 or A4? I can never remember. It's the medium white envelopes that we sell. And um, yeah. Pretty neat, right? Ma, I love it. I think these are just the cutest thing ever. And I think these are worthy of my mother, maybe my stepdaughters. I could send one to Anna, one to Stephanie. Rain or shine, you're always on my mind. Life showers bring, loves flowers. These would be really cute for either one of my either one of my girls. And Haley, if you're sitting at home watching, going, hey, what about me? I'll make you one too. <laughs> yeah, but she's my biggest fan, Haley is. She was here today cheering me on. I just want to sit and look at these. Do you guys just want to sit and look at them with me? <laughs> oh my gosh. So Debbie, you're going to have to go back and watch. Debbie says, I missed it, Kelly. How did you attach the umbrellas to the box? But how I did it is with window sheets. There's a little half inch strip of window sheet, half inch strip. And I, I attached the umbrellas with mini glue dots. And my umbrellas are finished in the back, too. You don't want, like, lipstick or perfume bottles on the back of your umbrellas, right? So I did finish them on all of my umbrellas. Super cute. This is the Best Dressed Designer Series paper. And you can get this in my online store right here. Don't forget to use the host code. This is the little template and what it looks like. I have the other little things here someplace too, but I don't know what I did with them. Story of my life, right? Uh, I was going to take a picture of them and write on them. I'll have to make some new ones, but I will have all the dimensions for these on my blog. So um, you can watch for that in a little while. I have to do photography and editing and all the things and uploading the videos. That usually takes me a couple hours to do all of that for a Facebook Live, sometimes longer, but usually a couple hours to do all that. And I'll get that all loaded up tonight. And um, yeah, I have a really, really pretty card to show you tomorrow. I got a card in the mail today and I'm gonna recreate it for you. I'm gonna flip you guys around now so I can see you. 
Um, I'm going to recreate it for you because I think it's super, super pretty and elegant. I can't hardly wait. It's going to be super quick and easy. I say super a lot. I know. It's going to be really quick and easy. You're going to love it. And I know you're going to need to make some because it's, it's pretty neat. I got a gift. Did I say that? A gift in the mail today from somebody. And they made this card and I thought, oh my lord, this is so pretty. So, um, Bonnie says she didn't think she wanted this designer series paper, but now it's number one on her list. I know. And you know, isn't that the truth, Bonnie, that you sometimes you just have to see somebody make something with it before you finally jump on board with, you know what? I do like that paper. I've had that happen so many times to me. And then this is the card. This is the other side of the paper that's not floral. Okay, the shoes, super cute. And I just made one of these stand-up front panel cards. This is the whole suite, the Dress to Impress suite that's in the mini catalog. Let me grab a mini catalog and let's see. Dress to Impress is on page 56. Here we go. This is the suite. Look at all those little purses, little backpacks or little purses, whatever you would like to make with them. I actually have... I'm going to be in a YouTube hop, like a video hop. I've never done just a YouTube hop before. I'm going to be in a YouTube hop. I have my idea already ready. We're all going to be using the little purse die Oops, in the hop. That's the whole theme of the hop. And I'll probably make a matching card because, well, you know, overachiever. <laughs> because I have to do more. Um, it's just wired in me, I think, most of the time. But um, this suite is super, super cute. And that's what my online class, my kit class this month, is all about the Dressed to Impress suite of products. Here's the dies. You see that? This, this thing right here makes the purse. And then there's all kinds of buttons and the little buckles. If you saw this little purse right here, look at those cute little buckles and that button. That's made out of gold foil paper. Yeah. It's got stitch lines all around it. You can emboss this. Like the tufted folder is really popular with these purses. This is the stamp set. We've got kindness is always in style. Hello, fabulous. Happy Mother's Day. Life is short. Buy the shoes and be as bold as your lipstick. <laughs> I like those sayings, right? This is my April kit class with Ashley Pfeiffer out of Canada. So if you're looking for something to do, it's going to include the um, the ribbon that comes with the suite, a blender pen, uh, half a pack of the designer series paper. What else is in it? Gosh, it was I just typed it all up last night. Now I can't remember. Um, I don't know, but it was a lot of stuff. Hang on, I've got it all right here. Because of course I don't have it put away yet. Oh, this was another. Oops. <laughs> This is another little purse. This is just made out of daffodil and lovely li lilac. Er, <laughs> Haley, I did it. Lovely lipstick. She said she was going to correct me if I said that. Um, oh, the tassels. Don't forget about the tassels. These are so cute. That's included with my kit. And yeah, the ribbon. So it's really a great value. Oh, and the noble. Noble Peacock rhinestones. You're going to get a full pack, not one that I've used already. <laughs> In case there were any questions about that. And what else? Oh, I know. I wanted to show you these little cards. These are super cute. I, I made some of these when we were at a Stampin' Up! event. We actually got to use these for our make and takes at a Stampin' Up! event. Look at how cute these are. Urgh! We have all these little scallop edged envelopes and they're little envelopes like you would attach this to a package or you could actually put it on the, oh, I just got a great idea. I'm not going to tell you because I'll show you. Okay, so we have, look at how pretty these are. Yeah, this one has very faint stripes on it. Um, you get a whole bunch of those. You get the flowery ones and then the yellow with the little label area. Okay, very, very pretty. And... Those are the envelopes. Here comes the cards. And these, these are all scored for you. They're three by threes. 
And then you stamp the little images from the um, Dress to Impress stamp set. Yeah. So these are really cute. This is a nice little packet. That's not included with my kit. But you can certainly um, get it next time you place an order. But our, our um, kit class, oh, and it also includes a pre-cut cardstock pack for eight cards. Four different designs. You get to make two of each. We give you all the stuff cut and scored in a cardstock pack. So that's the kit. You get all the product with the pre-cut cardstock so you can make eight cards. Pretty cool. Ashley and I really have a lot of fun creating these um, classes. Last month it was Welcome Easter. For those of you that may have ordered the Welcome Easter on the second round of those, just so you know, when I did that advertisement, I said that those would be going out on April 6th. I'm going to be working on those when I get done with you tonight here. And I don't have a ton of them to make, so I think I got 24 additional orders, so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. But once I get done putting those 24 together, my product all came today, then I'm going to be working on the birthday bonanza, which I said would go out in the mail on Monday. So far, barring any complications, I am on schedule. So, I'm gonna be back tomorrow with you to show you a gorgeous card and my gift that I got in the mail. I'll share that with you too. And uh, I hope that for those of you that are working, that this is your start of your weekend. And I might have a margarita. Probably not. <laughs> but um, Haley said today if she wasn't pregnant, she'd probably be drinking a lot right now. <laughs> we live in Wisconsin. That's pretty common. And you guys know that while I tease about it and talk about old fashions and margaritas, I don't drink very much, hardly ever at all. But um, it makes for good conversation, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. How are you guys doing now? I need to know, how are you doing? Is everybody doing okay? I know that the longer this gets drawn out, if you find that the news is like freaking you out or you're starting to get maybe your anxiety level is kind of getting to you a little bit, don't watch it. There's not a thing you can do about it. That's the way I look at it. There's not a darn thing you can do about what is going on right now except take care of yourself abide by the guidelines they're giving us which could change tomorrow we don't know just take care of yourself diana wants to know what an old-fashioned is oh my lord girlfriend look up wisconsin old-fashioned online it is the best drink ever it's got bitters in it and it's got um what do they call that sweet water i like southern comfort lots of times people get it with um a, a pick with a cherry and a pineapple piece on it, but I like it with olives, so I drink a Southern Comfort Old Fashioned Sweet. That's what I like. And it's a Wisconsin drink. I think maybe Minnesota might have them too. I can tell you that Iowa does not know what they are. So when you go into the treehouse in Bettendorf, Iowa for lunch with your friend Dina, and you say... Do you guys know how to make an old-fashioned? And the waiter says, oh, absolutely. Don't believe them. They do not know how to make an old-fashioned. <laughs> it was so horrible that I actually gave it back to them and said, I'll have an iced tea, please. It was gross. So, Iowa at the Treehouse in Bettendorf does not know how to make an old-fashioned. And most places have no idea what they are, but... Aw, Diane says she's missing her eight-month-old and two-and-a-half-month-old grandchildren. I'll bet you are. You know, I was thinking about that today, that well, how fortunate are we if you can look at some a brighter spot in all of this, right, that we have technology and we can do FaceTime. And you can actually go right here on Facebook to your instant messaging where you get private messages and you can push the phone button. You can video conference. We do it all the time video conference with anybody in your friends list. Did you know that? Yeah. So back to the news. Right. So if you find that your anxiety level is getting high and you're kind of freaking about freaking out about what's going on right now, don't watch the news. The news is a lot of doom and gloom. I highly recommend you watch murder instead. <laughs> Just kidding. That's what I watch all day. 
Steve always teases me that I'm going to kill him. And <laughs> I told him he's not worth anything to me dead. So that's probably not going to happen. But I'm not dumb enough to get caught like these people are because I watch murder all day long and I see all the stupid things. Haley, did we not just say today? Like, if you're going to be a crook, that guy is totally stupid. Why would you... 11 hours after your wife died, be calling the insurance company. Like, how dumb can you honestly be? People are dumb. Anyways, Haley is still watching. We had that conversation today. Like, killers are stupid. <laughs> yeah, so don't watch the news. Watch Murder or TBS. TBS has Friends and um, the Big Bang Theory. And watch something that makes you laugh. Joanne says she's enjoying her solitude. Good for you, Joanne. Um, Haley said yes. Um, Amy says thanks for making my day. You're very welcome. And Diana, it is depressing when you watch the news. You know, I am a person who wants to know what's going on. And I'm a realist. Like, I think about this stuff. <clears throat> but then my glass is always half full. I'm not looking at the, oh my Lord, what are the bad things that could happen from this, 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 and this. Although it's getting a little harder. I'm going, we'll be fine. This too shall pass. Um, but I don't have my head buried in the sand. I'm very much aware of what's going on. Tapping helps, Lisa said. And uh, Mindy, you say that all the time. You say what? What do you say? Stable story. Oh, sure. Mary wanted to know. I forgot all about it, Mary. So let me see if I... Do I still have that note here? Because was there anything else on that note? I don't know if I have it anymore. I cleaned up my office today, so that was really good. Um, So I was telling you guys, somebody asked me... I used to raise and train and show horses, and I said I had a stable story. Did I, did I miss it? That's what sparked that conversation. Did I miss riding horses and being around horses and part of the horse world? And um, not that much, but when Haley was small, like, I think, Haley, how old were you? Like 10, 9, 12? I think you were like 10. I started taking her for riding lessons, and I thought, well, if she'd like to get into horse riding and showing, we could do that. Um, at that time, it was kind of stupid because we probably really couldn't have afforded it because it is kind of expensive. Now it's way more expensive than it was when we did it because I did not grow up. I grew up kind of poor. <laughs> but that was our that was our focus. That's what we spent our money on was going to horse shows and registration fees and saddles and bridles and and um, all the things that we needed to be competitive in that whole world. Um, but we didn't have much money. So anyways, I took Haley for riding lessons. And... Um, we were, we, I, I would sit in the stands and she would do her lesson in a big inside arena. And she was on a horse that was kind of high, high strung, a big horse, a tall horse. And I wasn't, I should have said something. I should have said something to the, to the riding instructor. And instead I just thought, mm, she should know what she's doing, right? I've learned to just, just do it. You just don't think that people know what they're doing. <laughs> but anyways, the horse was a little high strung and Haley should not have been on that horse, period. Number one. Number two, there was a kid sitting in front of me and these are bleachers and there's like a railing and there was a saddle in front of him. He was screwing around, pushing the saddle, you know, messing with it. His mom kept yelling at him and just perfect form. The kid is absolutely not listening to the mother and I wanted to like backhand her and tell her to make her kid behave, but... Not my place, right? Anyways, the kid screwed around with the saddle long enough that as Haley was coming around the arena, coming right right by us, the kid kicked the saddle and it fell in the arena. When it hit the ground, the horse freaked out. And if you've ever been on a horse when it freaks out like that, it will be you're you'll be going like this, you're on the horse, and then boom, it'll go just like that. And I swear to God, they just sidestep like that and you go bam. Well, she didn't fall yet. <laughs> she slid over the side, of course, because she wasn't expecting that, but yet I could see what was going to happen. Like I, I could see that this was going to happen. So then I felt super bad. She held onto the side of the horse. The horse is freaked out. The horse is running now. 
and I'm like, oh my Lord. And I'm sitting there thinking, let go, just let go. You're going to hit the ground, but something worse is going to happen if you hang onto the ho horse because you can't get the horse stopped and it's freaking out. And she eventually, she held on for a long time. She was really strong, but she fell. Boom, right in the dirt. And guess what happened then? The end of horseback riding lessons, of course. We did go back once, maybe, because I am a full believer that you get back on your horse. And she did at that lesson, too, I believe. She got back on that horse. But we went back for one more lesson because I wasn't going to let it end like that. But she was totally not interested after that. And that really sucked. And as you can tell, I remember every detail pretty much of that day. So I'm still angry about it. I hold on to things for a little while, but it really sucked. And that was the end of our horse experience. And I don't think she's ever been horseback riding again. So that's my stable story, Mary. More than you probably wanted to know. <laughs> but yeah, so I should have said something and I didn't. And that's one of those times where you should have said something and you didn't. And you can't change back time. Anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm getting a little hungry. I don't know what I'm going to eat. Guess what my choices are? Um, clam chowder or spaghetti. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I know, but I love it. It's all very good. So I know I should have backhanded the kid, but you know what? It wasn't really the kid's fault. It was the parent's fault. Once again, it was the parent's fault because they didn't make their kid behave. And it was my fault because I should have. And I, and I, you know, I think I did say something to the lady and that's why she yelled at the kid. I, and after, when, after it happened, oh, then I did say something because I'm, you guys might not know this about me, but I'm not real shy. <laughs> and then we did have a few, I had a few words with her. She didn't say anything. I think she was horrified and she felt really bad. Um, but I, I did kind of chew her a little bit. I've been known to do that. Anyways, um... What did you just say? Mary said, uh, went to watch the cousin and wouldn't you know it, she went off in front of us. And I was a wreck. Yeah, it's really scary to watch somebody fall off a horse. I've fallen off horses many times. Like if you ride horses, you're going to get bucked off or you're going to fall off. I got taken through a barn one time. You know, the barn is this big. My horse is this big and my legs are over the side. Wham! Through the barn door, the horse ran and um, I got bucked off by one of our best horses. He was the most, the biggest, giantest, Appaloosa quarter horse, slow, clop, 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 clop. And one day I got on him out in the field and I, I kicked him a little bit to make him go faster. And he just got a bug up his butt and he started bucking and away I went. He'd never, ever done that before and he never did it again. But I wasn't ready for it, and I flew right off. So, yeah, I've fallen off of lots of horses. Never really got hurt, though. I got a concussion once, but it's probably where all the crazy comes from. <laughs> yes, Marcia, you are here at the end. Please do go back and watch. these. This is the projects that I shared with you tonight. And uh, they're super-duper oops, super duper cute. This is called a card in a box or a pop-up card box or whatever. But these are really a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy them. Make a couple. Look through your stamps. Look through your stamps, your punches, your dies, and see what you can make. Like, I, that's what I was doing. I was like, hmm, what can I use for one of those? And that's when I came up with, oh, how about the umbrellas? Yeah. So, again, if anybody wants to place an order, I always appreciate your orders. www.astampabove.com. I want you guys to have an amazing Friday night. I'll see you back here on Saturday. See you later.